what we do here is go back, back, back. Let's give a night of balls, Common Car 2015 welcome to the one and the only Mr. Scott Wilson. <laughs> now, just so you know, there's two microphones over there, and uh, if you want to ask some questions for Mr. Wilson, by all means, you can uh, do that. But I, I want to ask a question first, um, Mr. Mr. Wilson. I, I gotta call you Mr. Wilson because I feel it's a, a respective thing to do so. And so, if you don't mind, if that's okay. Okay, awesome. Um, about The Walking Dead, that uh, you pretty much got that role when you were visiting your mother back in Georgia, correct? Uh, yes, actually it was uh, her 97th birthday. And I was back there for that. I, I grew up in Georgia, that's where they shoot the show, as you probably know. But uh, I was telling a friend of mine that as long as I've been acting and as much work as they've done in Georgia, I've never worked there. Thirty minutes later, the phone rang, and here I am. <laughs> and that's how it all started. Now, does anyone have any questions they want to go up to the microphones? You can do so and, um, and ask Mr. Wilson anything. You can uh, feel free to do so. This left-hand side here, there's one over here. And on the right-hand side here, there's a microphone over there. Say your name and uh, where you're from, and uh, Mr. Wilson will answer for you. Hi, I'm Sandy. I'm from Vermont. I want to know how you felt when they chopped your head off. <laughs> when they chopped your head off, how did it feel? Outside of dead. I mean. Well, you know, it's not all bad. I have an extra head at home now. <laughs> I mean, there's a head in my closet, and that's the one I leave the brains in. Oh, okay. Well, I just want you to know, everybody thought that that was the worst writer they ever saw. You should have stayed. You were the most reasonable man in the whole cast. You should have been the leader. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for your question. And I'm, I'm going to go on this side right now. I think there's someone over here. Uh, please give your name and where you're from. I'm uh, Natalie, and I'm from Cambridge, Ontario. I uh, just wanted to know if you had a favorite episode in the show. You know, it's really tough. I, but before I came on the show, I watched the first season. I love the, I love the, the pilot. I loved a lot of those shows in the in the first season they were uniformly very well done and wonderfully acted. For Herschel, you know, there were some <laughs> throughout the his time on the show there were a lot of interesting things to me. Of course episode four oh five where he goes into the prison and tries to save everyone. That was a great episode for Herschel and you know, 403, where he's talking about you step outside, you risk your life, and take a drink of water. It was a wonderful, wonderfully written speech, and it was that was a lot of fun. All right, thank you very much for your question. Next, please. Yeah, my name is Daniel Mendelson from Buffalo, New York. I'm curious what you're working on since the show ended, and whether you prefer television or film as a medium. Well, you know, I'll take your last question first. Uh, you, if you're doing a play, you realize the full arc of the character in one evening. If you're doing a film or a guest shot on television, you, you realize the full arc of the character. You can see it and you know where it's going. But it, it, I found it interesting in this show to not know where the character was going to go over a period of time. So you're trying to plant seeds to, to kind of uh, suggest where the character should go. And it, it's a very organic process that I, I really enjoy. Uh, the first question was what? Uh, the projects you're working on now. Uh, uh, actually, it was in three episodes of Bosch that streams on Amazon. And I'm now doing uh, a show called Damien. If, if, if any of you seen The Omen? Well, there's a, there'll be a series coming out on The Omen, where uh, Damien is 30 years old now. So, I am so far like more than three or four episodes, and out of 
10, I think I may be in war before it's over in the first season. But uh, that's the showrunner, that's Lynn Mazzara, who was the showrunner of The Walking Dead at one time. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, and it should be interesting. I think I'm playing a bad guy, so. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure. But <laughs> Thanks for your question. I just wanted to do a follow-up before we get our next question that uh, about uh, film and TV. Before you actually got into film and TV, you uh, ended up with a basketball scholarship and uh, ended up studying architecture, actually. So how did you go from the split from architecture to uh, film and TV? Well, I got hepatitis, and, and they said I couldn't play basketball anymore. And, I, and if I had a relapse, it would be fatal. And I said, I want to see some of the world. So when I was able to, I hitchhiked from Georgia to California. I got drunk and ended up in acting. <laughs> <laughs> and look how well it did for you. There you go. Well, what, our next question, please. Come on up to the mic. Or, or no, someone's right there. Next question, please. Yes, and your name and where you're from. Hello, my name is um, Kern Hull and I'm from Ottawa. And my question is, out of your career of acting, what was your favorite role that you've played? You know, that's a very, Tough question for me. My, the first film I was in was in 1966, in the heat of the night. With, yeah, with, with, uh, Sidney Poitier, Rod Steiger, Norman Jewison, the uh, Canadian, was the director. Uh, and that led to, and, and I loved working. How, how, what more could a young actor ask for? Working with that group of people on his first film role. And then that led to In Cold Blood, which is a pretty enduring film. It is it's still considered a classic. But, and I've just worked with some great people. I've, worked, I've been fortunate. I've worked with great directors, great actors. Uh, I've worked around the world. I have seen the world. That's what I wanted to do. I, Worked in Poland and Hungary and Germany and Spain and England and Israel and Japan and Korea. And, uh, I've, I've worked around the world with a lot of uh, with a lot of directors and actors from the countries that I worked in. So it's been a very interesting life for me, and hopefully it will even be more interesting. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your question. We appreciate all you've been doing so far here, Mr. Wilson. We have a question over here. Please give us your name and where you're from. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario. And I would like to ask how you feel Herschel would have reacted if he had survived long enough to see Beth die, and how you feel about characters dying off as sort of martyrs on the show. Well, I, you know, I don't, you know, my mother is 101 years old now. And I don't think any parent should really outlive their children. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's probably a tough thing for. Him. I think it would have been tough for Herschel to lose his daughters, either one of them or both of them, whatever. I think it'd been hard. It'd been very hard. How he would have reacted, I, you know. What was your second part of the question, sir? How he feels about the characters in The Walking Dead tending to die off as a sort of martyr, like, as some kind of symbol. How, how the characters are dying off and say that... Can we get her mic a little bit louder just so we can hear? Sorry. Or come a little closer to the mic so we can hear you. And say as how the, some of the characters have died off as, like, a martyr or, like, as a symbolism of something good in the world dying off with them. As they're dying off as a martyr or symbolism of them, of the, uh, the characters dying off of The Walking Dead. Did I, get, did I get that right? About, you know, how some of them die to show that you can't have artisans in the world, some of them die as sacrifices, some of them die because they deserved it. So what's he think of that? Yeah, what does he, how does he feel about how some of the characters go? So how do you feel how some of the characters are dying off of The uh, Walking Dead? Well, you know, the, the first season, I'll go back to that, that, after looking at the first season, I knew that I wanted to be a part of the show. And because I became fans of those actors who were in the first season. And I think there are only five of them left now. Quite a few of them are gone. Uh, and I know that 
when I came in, they welcomed me. They made me feel totally comfortable and, and like I should be there. And when they died, I, I always had the feeling that we were walking on their shoulders because they really started building the audience for the show. And so I felt like I was, I was one of the ones walking on their shoulders. Now they're walking on my shoulders. And the, the actors that everyone on that show eventually is going to uh, be killed off. So it's, you don't think that while you're on it, but it happens. <laughs> Thank you very much for your questions. And over here, let's get to the next one, please. Hi, um, I'm Eric from uh, Hamilton. Uh, I was just wondering how they uh, shot the scenes with your leg missing after you know, Rick chopped it off. Because you clearly have both legs, right? So. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an interesting process. There's two ways. The old-fashioned way is one where you hide the leg and holding it up. Like in the uh, cell, they cut a hole in the bunk, and I put my leg down, and it looked as though half of the leg were gone. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, tricking you the old shell game. And the other way is through CGI computer-generated imaging, where you put on a green sock, and if you still try to hide the leg, but if any of the green is seen, then they'll come back and, uh, like if my finger here is the leg, the green sock, and you see him do that, then you go back and you shoot what's back here, and you come back and lay it over the green sock, and it makes it look like the leg isn't there. So that was, that's basically the two things that they did to make that work. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Over here, please. Your name and where you're from. I'm Hannah, and I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I was wondering who, out of all of the seasons in The Walking Dead, who is your favorite person to work with? Who's your favorite person to work with of all the seasons of Walking Dead? I really enjoyed all of, all of the people. I, I had a lot of scenes with Rick, and it was always fun working with him, uh, with Andrew Lincoln and my daughters were great to work with, Stephen Mill, you know, Sarah Wayne Callies, uh, Lori Holden. I, I mean, I didn't have enough scenes with a lot of the actors on the show. Uh, I would have liked to have had more scenes with a lot of them. But they're all wonderful actors, so I got a big kick out of watching them work at times, just, just about as much as I enjoyed doing it myself. Thank you very much for your question. Over here. Chandler was very good too. Kid, watching him grow up was great. Thank you very much. Question over here, please. Hi, I'm Leona. I'm from Buffalo. Um, I was wondering, what did Herschel feel the moment before he was dying? Did he know he was going to die, or was he really feeling hopeful about the future? Like, what was his thoughts in that moment? Right. Uh, you know, it, it, I think. You know, you know, that that moment was set up by what preceded it. And I love that, where the tank is down here and you have the tank aimed up at the prison and you have cars with heavy duty weaponry on them and the governor is hollering up for Rick to come on down and like, let's make a deal or something. <laughs> and so Rick comes walking down with a six shooter on his hip. I mean, it's like an old western where you're having a shootout on Main Street or something. So that kind of, it set the stage and they're doing this talk and you can, Herschel is listening to, to Rick talk and he's saying some of the same things that Herschel was said earlier. So I think he's kind of proud of, of, uh, of Rick at that moment. He's proud of where he thinks Rick is going. He feels comfortable with it. So I think that, that uh, and again, it's a collaborative medium. You know, the director came over and said, it's time for that smile. Okay. I mean, so, you know, it's really, it, it felt right. It felt good. And that morning before, when I came in, every, the, all of the crew members and everyone were wearing Herschel suspenders and they were applauding. And, you know, it was, it was uh, the crew, the account, everyone. It was really a nice send-off. Thank Thanks for your question. Over here, please. 
Sydney from Milton, and I was wondering what your favorite storyline was. My favorite storyline? Yes. I, that's hard to say because, you know, I like Maggie and, and Glenn's, you know, storyline, how, how that had evolved in their uh, relationship. And, and Rick is so, he's been shattered so many times. I mean, his wife, he's, <laughs> he just, he wakes up in a, from a coma and he comes out and finds his new world. I mean, it's very, uh, the whole, the whole storyline is very interesting. I mean, I, I, uh, I kind of binge watch it now. I, I get behind and I have to catch up. Thank you for your question. Over here, please. Hi, Tracy from Buffalo. Um, In Cold Blood is one of the terrors of my childhood. <laughs> and You're I know too young to have seen it there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I know that like, you even resemble that character in real life. And I mean, to be kind of a monster. And then here you are now, like, one of the most beloved characters mm -hmm. in the film. Like, what is your favorite? Do you like being the villain? Or I know that that's kind of a really different kind of thing, but then to be so popular. And then I, I also have to know if how you had any reactions with, um, with Truman and Wendy. I did meet Truman when we were at the Clutter House. And it was a closed set. And Brooks opened it up to the press for three days when we were at the Clutter House and Truman came in and I met him and talked to him. We went out and we took some pictures of me and him and Blake and one of them ended up on the cover of Life magazine. And but I never really got to know Truman, but I spoke to him there. Uh, my first reaction to, to In Cold Blood, when I saw it, I threw up. Uh, the first reaction I had from someone who had seen it, I was in Dubrovnik, Yugoslavia. And I was at the desk with this big actor, Michael Conrad, huge guy. And these two girls walked up and one of them said to him, you know, you look familiar. I said, he's a movie star. And one of them said to me, you look familiar. And he said, you recognize him from his movie, yeah, what movie, in Cold Blood. And the girls, both of them, froze. And then they started screaming and backing away from me. <laughs> the wall stopped them. All right, I, I think they might still be backing away. But, but that was the first reaction I had to a member of the, the audience that had seen that film. It, but, but you know, as an actor, I think, I know, for me, in that role, I didn't want the audience to like my character. And that's kind of unusual, I think. Even if you're playing a bad guy, you kind of want the audience to like you. Uh, but in that, I didn't want them to like my character. Uh, because it was based on a true happy story and I didn't want to glorify it in any way or glamorize the character that I was playing. Uh, and maybe I succeeded too well. <laughs> but, but then I've played Saints as well. I, I did a film in Poland that was written by Carol Wojtyla who later became Pope John Paul II. And we had two audiences with Pope John Paul II. He, when he was a young man, he was an actor and playwright. He wrote this play as uh, a tribute to the person that was his inspiration for following his vocation into the priesthood. And that was a guy by the name of Adam Mirowski, who was a successful artist from 1845 to 1917. And in his 40s, he came in contact with the homeless and devoted the balance of his life to the homes. He became a monk, changed his name to Brother Albert, and he was canonized and saying Brother Albert by the Pope, which is kind of unusual. But, but uh, so I played good guys and bad guys, and the Pope saw the film, we had a screening with him. He was 
very complimentary. I think an actor really tries to do what the role calls for. If you if you find something interesting about the character that you're playing, you want to to uh, you want to create that bring life to, to what you're imagining through the dialogue and through your manner. Thank you, Greta. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe too long of an answer. No, that's okay. Thank you for your question very much. Over here, please. A question. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm from Oshawa. Um, I'm just curious, what kind of acting directions did you and even other cast members get for your encounters with uh, zombies in The Walking Dead? That's an interesting question. I don't know that anyone ever told me how to respond to them. Uh, but I do know that the actors that were playing the zombies or the walkers were all dedicated. I mean, they came in and they, they had to go to zombie school to learn how to walk properly and the kind of noises to make when they had to make noises. And they were always in character. I mean, they were always there, even when the camera wasn't rolling. So, and I had some conversations with some of the guys, but they were, they made it easier for the actors because you looked at them and they weren't leaning against the fence post smoking a cigarette. They were actually doing what they do in the show, so it, it, it uh, was an enormous help to, to all the cats. Thank you for your question. Yes, guess over here, please. Hi, I'm Jeff from... Uh, Talk Ontario. right into the microphone so we can hear you, Jeff, sorry. sorry. I'm Jeffrey from London, Ontario, and I was wondering which actor best represented uh, their character in this story, or in The Walking Dead? Which, which which actor portrayed their character the best in The Walking Dead? I'm going to give that a tie. <laughs> Judith. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you for your question. Yes, please, over here. Hi, I'm Elvira from Houston, Texas, and I was just wondering, out of all your career, what was the funniest or most unusual thing you've ever had to do? The most unusual thing I've ever had to do? No, or funniest, yeah. The funniest. Well, it's, it's really kind of unusual watching the film that I'm in at the Pope I mean, <laughs> Really, I was sitting from here to the end of the stage or closer behind him with no one between us. And, and I'm watching him watch the movie. And if he twitched, I thought he was reacting to the movie. You know, so it was it was very unusual situation. I mean, Unfortunately, he was very complimentary afterwards. Awesome. Thank you for your question. A couple more we're going to do. Please, Nate, where are you from? Hi, I'm Stephanie from Albany. Um, one of my favorite roles that you were in was when you were a Pa in Judge Dredd. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what your favorite role that you've played is. It's hard. To, it's very, it's tough to say. I, I was in another film in Poland in 1984 during martial law. And it was a Polish cast, Polish director. And it's something we talked about making for about nine years. And ultimately, we got it made. We shot it for like $40,000 in Western currency. And we won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. Uh, so it was. That was a great experience because you would meet people of character who were uh, going through hardship. So, it was a good life experience. Thank you for your question. Yes, over here, please. Oh, my name is Leo. I'm from Chazy, New York. I was just wondering, I know there are probably all a bunch of characters, but I was wondering who um, did the biggest pranks on uh, Walking Dead when you were playing there. And what, what was it? I don't, I mean, there were, I'll tell you what about me, I mentioned it earlier, you cut a hole in the bunk. My leg was in there and I decided to mostly stay there because it would be faster rather than me getting out of the bunk and back in before every shot. So there was shooting a scene where everyone is gathered around, it's an emotional scene and all of a sudden my eyes were closed, all of a sudden I started snoring. 
<laughs> so, so I've, I wake up with everyone laughing at me. <laughs> you say, do you know you were snoring? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. You. Uh, just before I begin our last two questions, uh, talking about sleeping, you are you find it harder. You're uncursed. Or you're cursed that you can't sleep on an airplane. Is that correct? I can sleep on an well, you can sleep on an airplane. Oh, okay. I read somewhere that you you find it hard to sleep on an airplane. I guess I got my facts wrong. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to go and contact IMDb then and go fire whoever wrote that quote then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, no, I, I, Oh, oh, okay. All right. Let's, let's get our next question over here. <laughs> I don't know how I can follow that, really. Um, Herschel is largely regarded Hold on. Hold on. What, what's your name and where you're from? I'm CJ from Kitchener, Ontario. All right. Thank you. Um, Herschel is largely regarded as being a moral compass in the group and for Rick. I'm just wondering, in interpreting that character, what would you say Herschel's own moral struggle was? It's an interesting question because I know from the opening episode that I was in that he was giving this this uh, eulogy or whatever at this con uh, to someone that had died. And so it, it raised the question of what does he believe? What are his beliefs? And over a period of time, I know that I want him to lead not lead, but I want him to be an example by how he reacted to people, not necessarily what he was saying to them, but how he conducted himself. Uh, and I guess it becomes the dialogue helped set that up. But but it was, uh, it, you know, you, you it, it's a collaborative medium. There, the dialogue helps. There are three cameras on that show, and the camera operators did a great job of covering, they do a great job of covering all the actors. So they send all that footage to the editing rooms, and they follow the script, the storyline, but they have shots to choose from. And so I have to say that I think the, the camera operators and the, and the editors helped establish who Herschel was as well. Uh, it's very interesting working with three cameras all most of the time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. And our last question for the q and I'm back. Uh, Danny from Buffalo. And uh, first of all, I have to say thank you because I happen to be a pastor of a church. And Herschel gave me a lot of sermon material, which was great. But uh, I was curious, because of your experience as an actor when you came on the show, how much leeway did they give you to improvise uh, with the script? Most of the time, not really. That, you know, there was some. You know, but but it still you have to inhabit a character. You have to bring him to life. Uh, and I think the actors on that show do a remarkable job of doing that. It's 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 an interesting show. Zombies are in it, but it's a show about people. It's a show about uh, how they deal with each other in the, in the situations they find themselves in survival. Who they are as people. All right, everyone. I'd like to say thank you very much for coming out and participating in our first 2015 Niagara Falls Comic Con Q&A with uh, the one and only Mr. Scott Wilson. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.